Hello, uh, I'm Dale Harian. We're here at Lampa Manufacturing. We're going to go through um, how to take your Vapor Fire 100 furnace off the pallet and how to handle it, how to move it around, and then also uh, your core principles about how to uh, actually go through the installation. We're going to break it down into small sections so that you should be able to easily handle the installation or your installer. When you're ready to hook your furnace into your ducting system, the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, uh, install a plenum on the furnace. This is the plenum here. This just basically it's your your central box to distribute the heat uh, to the ducting in your house. Now the vapor fire takes a two foot by two foot square plenum, and the height you basically do based on your installation. Generally, it's based on the ceiling height of your house or your shop or wherever you're putting this. Um, you can go as low as six inches if if you don't have any headroom. We've had people with only six and a half foot ceilings. Uh, or I've had people with eight and 10 foot plenums on height. So with the Vapor Fire 100 furnace, uh, we normally say here in Minnesota, where we get a couple weeks of 30 below weather each winter, that you can handle up to about a 3,400 square foot ranch style home. Now that's a one level home, generally with a basement. Uh, a ranch style, we say 3,400 because that's the hardest type of home to heat. Now, if it's a two-story, that's an easier style to heat uh, because there's less wall and uh, ceiling space. Well, when you're ready to hook your furnace into your ducting system, the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, uh, install a plenum on the furnace. This is the plenum here. This just basically it's your your central box to distribute the heat uh, to the ducting in your house. Now, the vapor fire takes a two foot by two foot square plenum and the height you basically do based on your installation. Generally, it's based on the ceiling height of your house or your shop or wherever you're putting this. Um, you can go as low as six inches if, if you don't have any headroom. We've had people with only six and a half foot ceilings. Uh, or I've had people with eight and 10 foot plenums on height. This plenum here was actually installed by a contractor when we moved into our new building. Uh, the, the vapor fire requires between 180 and 200 square inch, inches of ducting coming off of the plenum. Now it can come off the top like this, off the side. You can have two, three, four pipes, whatever you want, or square ducts or rectangular ducts. Any of that's fine. When they installed this one, they only put a 12 inch duct on here, which does not provide enough uh, air coming out. So in a normal ins installation in your home or shop, you could put another pipe off the side, back, front, whatever you want. But here in our office, we're shooting this air out into our shop. So here I'm going to install a register and this will be installed on the front of the plenum here. That gives me more square inches to let more heat out and I can open and close it as I, would, as I desire. Unlike traditional wood furnaces that radiate lots of heat, the vapor fire radiates very little heat. All the heat stays in the plenum and in the ducting. Uh, you can run this furnace for three months, put your hands on the side, and it'll be cold to the touch. It's so well insulated. So in a lot of installations, they either put it in the basement or in the garage, and they want to radiate heat because the old wood furnace did. This one won't work that way. So if you're in a basement or a garage and you want heat, you either have to add some ducting to that, that, uh, that space, or especially in garages or basements, you can again put a register on here so that you can dump heat into those areas. Again, with a, a register like this, you can add, you know, increase or decrease how much heat. 